All right, this video is only for those avid chewers out there. And yes, I understand the hypocrisy in that statement. It's like saying who breathes air, blinks, or sings in the shower. Everybody, I get it. But this one is for those special types of chewers. Well, technically 35 to 50% of the population because this is the group estimated to chew gum on a somewhat frequent basis. Gum, which is often made of synthetic polymers, AKA synthetic rubber bases made from petroleum based polymers, AKA, AKA plastics, which according to this new study, break down into the latest hot topic on the scientific streets, microplastics at a pretty eye-opening rate when that aforementioned chewing happens. So if you fall into that category, it may be worth watching this before your next chew. Just saying, here's what you gotta know. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftinbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are talking microplastic mitigation and really precautionary mitigation because we are still very much in the learning phase on how microplastics and nanoplastics impact the human body as most studies today are in vitro in an out-of-body setting or animal-based. However, this learning is unfortunately being supplemented by a rapidly growing sample size because there has been an exponential increase in annual plastic production going from an estimated 1.5 million annual tons in the 1950s to a whopping, and I mean whopping, estimated 400 million annual metric tons today. Up 100 million metric tons from just a few years ago. Damn is right unintentionally establishing the sample population to gauge the effects of this plastic runoff as basically the entire human population. Because by now, plastic is basically everywhere. So uh, it's probably in our collective best interest to get a better understanding of this durable darling sooner rather than later. And while that's happening, attempt to minimize our exposure to these microscopic, undestructible micro warriors. For many of the reasons we talked about in this previous powwow, just to be safe. Which brings us to chewing gum. Because as mentioned, it's typically made from a rubbery synthetic petroleum base with added sweeteners and flavorings to give it its well, spirit fingers taste. If you uh, get that reference, touche. Sneakily and unknowingly too many making the star of this taste bud extravaganza, the plastic itself. Now, if you're starting to put two and two together, you may be thinking chewing plastic probably isn't a good microplastic mitigation strategy. And you'd be right. With no need just to take my word for it because we have a new hot off the scientific street study backing up that hunch. And here's what it found. Well, actually, before we get there, I'd be doing you an injustice if I didn't tell you how they conducted their testing because it was really quite clever. They analyzed five synthetic plastic-based gums and five natural gums that leverage a plant-based polymer such as chicle or tree sap to gauge the overall exposure risk from a wide variety of these mouth entertaining products. And to reduce the human factor of varied chewing patterns and saliva, they conducted two separate experiments. First, they had seven pieces from each brand chewed by each participant. I know, quite a mouth workout. Collecting saliva samples every 30 seconds for a duration of four minutes. Putting all the samples from each single participant all together at the end to measure the total runoff. 
and in parallel, they ran a separate experiment. Here, saliva samples were collected periodically over a 20 minute period. Using special staining techniques to measure the number of microplastics present in each saliva sample, with the aim to better understand the release rate of microplastics from each piece of gum. So, from a sample collection perspective, it was quite impressively done. Which brings us to what they found. First, on a per stick of gum basis, they observed that an average of 100 microplastics were released per gram of gum. Although some individual pieces released up to 600 microplastics per gram. And if we were to factor in that a typical piece of gum weighs between two and six grams, that would mean that a single large piece of gum could release up to 3,000 plastic particles. Whoa, I know. And if we do just a little more math, factoring in that the average person chews 160 to 180 small pieces of gum per year, that would add up to around 30,000 gum-based microplastics to one's exposure per year, which obviously poses a significant increase in potentially ingested particles entering your hottest biological club in town, club circulation. And not to burst your bubble, yeah, you see what I did there? We haven't even gotten to the really interesting part. As the researchers surprisingly observed that both the synthetic and natural gums had similar amounts of microplastics released when chewed. Which, to be honest, makes me personally skeptical around the natural gum brands used in the study. Because gums using only natural ingredients shouldn't be seeping synthetic polymer byproducts like polyolefins unless they had additional added stuff in them. And since this is a preprint study, we don't have the exact details on the brands just yet to open an ingredient investigation ourselves. So just a thought to keep in mind. And while you're doing that, here is another Super interesting observation. They found that most of the microplastics detached from the gum within the first two minutes of chewing. And 94% of the particles collected detached within the first eight minutes of chewing. And if you assume that it was the enzymes in saliva doing a lot of this breakdown, you would be assuming incorrectly just like I was. As researchers noted that it was the act of chewing and its rash abrasiveness which drove most of the particle release. Interesting stuff. I know. And if you're still listening and not on a side quest calculating how much gum you chew and the ingredients in said gum, you should also know that this doesn't necessarily mean that all of those particles are actually getting absorbed into your body, as there is a good chance a portion passes through digestion and just comes out the other side. However, we do know that these micro and nanoplastics have the ability to get absorbed through the cells of the gut wall and also interact with the trillions of bacteria in said gut, which have the potential to ferment them and release potentially benign or harmful byproducts. Again, we're still very much in unknown territory where a lot more research needs to be done. That being said, in the limited data that we do have, there are reasons to be cautious, as those studies have indicated some not so cool for biological school effects, including increased cytotoxicity, inflammation, and oxidative stress. As a growing body of studies have displayed that microplastics and nanoplastics increase reactive oxygen species, endoplasmic reticulum stress, apoptosis in intestinal cells, cause bone reabsorption, and upregulation of inflammatory markers such as IL-8, IL-6, and TNF-alpha in lung cells, macrophages, and malignancies, and even potentially damage DNA, compromising the overall integrity of the cell. Oh, all this while also being connected to harmful compounds such as 
BPA, which has been consistently linked to obesity, cardiovascular disease, and endocrine disorders. Yeah. And if you were waiting for the list of net positives that come with microplastics, you can stop holding your breath now. Because there have been no groundbreaking studies stating that more microplastics improve anything except, well, one's potential risk for cellular dysfunction. Reiterating our opening suggestion of proceeding with caution, which sets us up for the good news section of the show. Because there happens to be a number of things you can do to make a difference. Let's talk about some of them. First, for my gum chewers, if you are a chewing addict, which I personally was for a number of years, probably like a good decade or so. Transitioning to a natural base gum is a good first move. From here, aiming to slowly reduce your chewing habit over time would be step two. And yes, it can be done. Your mouth doesn't just turn into a dry, deserted desert for the rest of eternity. Although it may feel like that in the beginning. Like anything, it takes time and consistency. And speaking for myself, I don't even think about chewing gum anymore. However, in the meantime, when you're putting that plan into motion, extending the life of each piece you chew is a good here and now strategy to deploy. This is because each piece of gum is limited to the total amount of plastic it contains. So chewing one piece for longer is a much better option in terms of exposure risk compared to swapping out pieces every time your mouth gets bored. So. You have a bunch of options, which in my personal opinion are worth exploring. And in addition to fine tuning your chewing strategy, making attempts to minimize your exposure in other areas of your life will probably take you even further in your feeling effing awesome endeavors, which is another term I like to use to define longevity. And we talk about all of these strategies in that aforementioned video here, which will also be linked in the show notes below. At a high level, this list includes eating real whole foods, avoiding the use of plastic containers, bottles, mugs, and Tupperware as much as you can, especially when heating stuff up, filtering your water as tap water is a hot spot for micro and nanoplastics, avoiding synthetically derived cleaning supplies and body care items, which significantly increase the risk of absorption through the skin, gut, and lungs, prioritizing the use of natural clothing, avoiding polyester and nylon-based stuff as much as possible, and even taking a look at the bedding material that you use. Because Think about it. You spend up to 30% of your life in your bed, or at least you should be spending that time in your bed. And you can check out the How to Sleep playlist for all the reasons why. And while you're doing that, remember this reality. You're not gonna be perfect here. It's impossible. We all interact with so much plastic material on a daily, hourly, and minutely basis, it will make your head spin just trying to comprehend it. I mean, odds are your skin is touching something plastic right now. That being said, just being aware, conscious, and proactive can dramatically mitigate your risk of this growing health concern. So work on this new awareness in your daily habits, routines, and rituals, little by little, day by day. Because frankly, it's amazing what happens when you give something like your cellular and metabolic function a little more attention. You begin to feel how you're capable of feeling what I like to call the default human state effing awesome a little bit more each and every day. And once you get a taste of it, you never want to go back to that standard tired, lethargic, sore, brain fog induced way of living. It's kind of like spirit finger energy 24 seven. And I'm not talking about those poser spirit fingers. We're talking these are spirit fingers. And there's only one way to find out. I